Hi everybody, welcome to chapter one, Player Foundations. So this chapter, as it says in the name, is all about building a, a playable character with the foundational controls that we'll need to be able to build a good platformer. So what that means to me is that this player has tight and responsive controls, which will allow us to have that good solid um, foundation for a quick and snappy gameplay. And that means that it's not gonna be slow and floaty. In fact, we'll look at my platformer uh, tutorial series, which has a little bit more of that floaty feeling, maybe not so much in the jumping, but certainly in the running. And this quick and snappy type of control is something that we're going to be building off for the whole series. We're also going to be building this player using a state machine design pattern. So even though this course is designed for beginner to intermediate users to Godot, and you may be new at programming, we're going to really jump into the deep end with that state machine. And I think it's important that you understand why. And you'll be able to follow along. And even if you don't understand everything about how the state machine works, or maybe even why we're implementing it, I hope that as the series progresses, you will grow to appreciate it and understand the use for such a pattern in programming. What we'll do in this video is kind of review a few things that I like about the platforming and controls in a few games. We'll look at Silk Song. We're going to look at one of my games, The Millennial Warrior. And we'll even look at that um, platforming series that I did and, and just kind of talk about the controls there and look at some of the things I don't really like about that. And then I will go through the episode list for this chapter and lay out kind of the roadmap for what we're going to do. OK, so right here we're looking at this, you know, the platform or the 2D platform or movement series that I did. And we're going to be borrowing a lot of principles from this for this game, but we're going to do some things a little bit differently as well. Now, the first thing about this game is there's a little bit of kind of this momentum and weight and like this skidding mechanic that we've got. So like especially if I'm running, let's let's go ahead and run. You can see how it takes a bit to turn. Now, that's something that I did for fun to mimic kind of the Super Mario Brothers feel, but I don't really want to keep that. I do like the jump gravity feel of this game, but maybe not so much the movement. Um, I think it could just be a little bit more responsive. And certainly for this kind of an action combat game, you know, you have to kind of look at the pros and cons. But for what I'm looking for, I think I want that more snappy movement. OK, so I popped over here to Hollow Knight Silk Song, and I just want to look at this real quickly. Now, one thing that you'll notice about this game is it looks like there's a bit of a um that same kind of movement uh acceleration in my other game but it's actually misleading because it's it's more in the animations of the character where i don't know the character's name here but uh, she's kind of changing direction right but you can see that the speed is pretty instant and even when i jump i can jump up and onto platforms pretty quickly and it's got a similar feel there's some things that i didn't talk about in the platformer demo that are present here um like we've got this variable height jump so if you tap it then you jump short if you hold it you jump high and you know we've got this just simple movement ability we've got nice animations that seem to be different when you're jumping and falling and this is actually something i want to mimic and i want to have um somewhat dynamic jump animations based on the uh, velocity of the player okay now, one thing that uh, this game does not do is there is no crouch. Let's go ahead and kill this dude. <laughs> They're so goofy sounding. <laughs> okay. Man, I'm terrible right now. So you can't crouch. And, you know, there's a lot of platforms that are solid on top and bottom. One thing that we're going to do differently, and I'll show you this in Millennial Warrior, is we are going to have more jump through platforms. And, and I think there are some in this game. I haven't played it a ton yet. I just can't think where they are. You know, platforms where you can jump up through from the bottom. Okay. But uh, this is a really good example of snappy movement. And, you know, I'm even going to point out some things that we're not going to work on in this chapter. Like the attack does not prevent you from running. Right. And, and so it's kind of a quick and snappy game in that respect. Okay. So this is Millennial Warrior. I'm going to go ahead and continue my game. This was a game jam entry that I built, um, I don't know, a couple years ago. You know, combat, um, jumping, the movement is a lot like, you can see it's it's fairly responsive, right? He turns direction pretty quickly. It's a lot like Silk Song, okay? Um, one of the differences that I want to point out, though, is we do have these jump through platforms. Let me kill this slime. Ooh, I've got a dash ability already unlocked. Okay, so these platforms here, 
and I can't jump high enough because it's tall, but you can jump through them from the top, from the bottom up. And I want to have more of that in, in the game that we build. Also the ability to jump down through these platforms. So you can see when I crouch, I can jump down through it. Okay. So those are some of the basic things I want to, to really draw from as we're building this player controller in our, in our Metroidvania game. And we're going to draw a lot of inspiration from this game, from Silk Song. And, you know, if there's other titles out there, I'm sure we'll draw inspiration from that as well. But that's kind of where we're going. Now that we've kind of looked at some of the games and kind of outlined what we want to do with our player and the foundations, let's talk about the roadmap for this chapter and what each episode is going to entail. So we'll begin with the player scene and some basic movement and collision because that's just what we need right for the player to work it can't fall through the floor and it needs to exist and so we'll just get that set up and along with that we'll build some really rudimentary levels like you're seeing in the example here and then next we're going to introduce the player state machine so like i said we're going to dive into the deep end because a state machine is a fairly advanced concept to wrap one's mind around and implement so if you're new just bear with me we'll get through this and if you're a little bit more advanced then hopefully um, I present some fun ideas. This player state machine is going to be integrated into the player script. It's not going to be a separate play uh, state machine module, but rather integrated directly into our player. Along with that, in the next episode, we will flesh out our idle and run states. We'll address some things like running on slopes and maybe even adding a camera to our player so that it follows him. The next episode will be focused on building our basic jump and fall states, and these are critical for the platforming in our game, of course. And these are each going to be a separate state so that we can handle certain aspects of the jump and the fall separately. We're also going to introduce some basic gravity concepts and how we're going to work with that to make our jump feel a little bit snappier and weightier. The next episode is going to be advanced platforming. Now this is going to be just taking our jump to the next level. So this is where we'll introduce variable height jumps, as well as coyote time, which is the ability for the player to jump just moments after they've left. Think Wiley Coyote, hence the name, as well as a jump buffer. And both of these things are to help the player feel that responsiveness in your game and not be punished if their timing's just a tiny bit off. And then we will be introducing a crouch. And the crouch is going to be, you know, pretty basic right now, but it will also allow us to do things like jump down through one-way platforms. So we'll build that functionality into our crouch in addition to like a change to our collision shape so that maybe you can duck and dodge higher aiming projectiles. Mike, this is kind of lame. I mean, who's going to want to play just a pink box? Okay, so I guess Michael doesn't think the game's good enough. So what we'll need to do is add a sprite 2D and begin setting up our animations just to give the game a little bit of spice and flavor. What do you think about that, Michael? Yeah, much better. Okay, and then I guess because we're getting that far in, we'll do one more episode, episode eight, where we will focus on that dynamic jump and fall animation, which I kind of mentioned earlier as we were looking at Silk Song. All right, there we have it. That's the chapter overview for our Player Foundations chapter, chapter one. Go ahead and drop in the comments if there's anything you think I've overlooked. Maybe some of the things that you're looking for are going to be addressed later on in the series. And so you can always check out my series roadmap, which is constantly changing and growing. But you'll see some of the abilities we're going to have in the future, like double jump and dash and things like that. But uh, for those of you who are new, please subscribe to my channel. That way you can see what's coming next and it helps me grow. And as always, we'll see you next time.